today. Yeah. Okay, Chief Four. One of the first questions I'm going to ask you. You've been here now, not quite a year. Oh, going on two years. Has it been that long? Yes. Well, time really flies, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, when you have it. That's right. What do you think of our town and our police department? I, I, because being originally from this area anyway, I, I enjoy the community and in uh, the area greatly. You know, it, it's because I'm I like to do recreation type stuff, and it's easy for me to leave and be a short ways, uh, and I can do my recreational things that I like to do and hunt and fish and snowmobile and that type of stuff and it's not a two and a half hour three hour drive to get to where, to where I want to go from where I live down south and that type of thing and and the community is I mean it's changed but it hasn't changed you know the basically I've, I've in a two-year period of time basically that I've been here is you know, I've met people that I knew 30 years ago when I was up here and, and that type of thing. And I've uh, rekindled old relationships with some of those people and and uh, that type of stuff. So I'm enjoying myself. I'm having a good time. That's good. That's good. And uh, our, uh, you you live in uh, the Gill's house up there. Right. And that's a beautiful home. That's a beautiful home. I mean, uh, I've been in there before. I knew yeah. the Gills real well. It's a re very nice house. I and, enjoy it greatly. Uh, a lot of room. Right. So your children come and visit you. They come and visit and uh, that type of stuff. Not as often as I like, but, well, uh, you know, they have, a, they have a life of their own and um, that type of thing. So they, they're busy also. And you have grandchildren? I have one grandson, actually. You don't spoil them? Uh, no, not at all. He's uh, he calls me Papa, and uh, he and I are the best of friends. And I I try to get him out to do stuff that I do, snowmobile and four wheel, and and uh, he really enjoys doing that type of thing. How old is your grandson? He was three, the twelfth uh, of February. Oh, so he's just a little thing, but I, I'm beginning to understand everything he says and that type of stuff. So we're he can't do anything when he comes up here. He He's got to be with me all the time, and that, that kind makes of thing. you good. You know, it's one of the most important things in life, regardless what your job is, is to have the relationship with your children and your grandchildren. Right. And uh, if you don't have that relationship, it it's hot and everything. I, I know I have too good of a relationship, I think, sometimes with my kids and my grandchildren, but I enjoy it. I like yeah. said I enjoy. It. I I really enjoy my grandson. I have he and I have great times together. I, I really look forward to seeing him and having him come and, like you said, I have a big house there and, and uh, he's got his own bedroom and that type of stuff, so. Makes um, it nice. It, it, I have a good time with him. That's good. It. That's good. He, does he come very often? Uh, not as often as I'd like, but uh, quite often. About every other weekend well, or every third bad. weekend yeah, or something. Yeah, not bad. And I, I usually try to talk to him at least, uh, at least once a day or every other day or something along that line on the phone. Well, my daughter, she still it, likes to call me every day, and she just lives out on the flat. Yeah. You know, she has to. Yeah, check in with mom. Yeah, check in with me. Yeah. And my son's just as bad, so right. I can't say anything. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the police department. Now, one time we, the last time we had gotten together and everything, they was really talking very strong about moving down downstairs in the front part there or the side part right. or someplace downstairs. Which really wouldn't have been a good, good idea. Well, it was what happened with that was is uh, the state basically would get involved in that type of thing, and it would have to be engineers hired to do uh, a lot of money. A lot of money, and uh, at, at that same time, I was looking into that federal grant and to hire an officer, and and I was looking at better serving the public. Um, and we could do that with an additional officer over a new, newer police department yeah. and spending that probably more money for the new police department and where we wouldn't get any extra service to the public where that new officer or that new position would give us a better service to the public. Well, you, you did some changing down there anyway. You, you have now, they, come in, they don't come in that side door, they go around back and come in that door. No, we, we really haven't changed anything and we haven't 
we haven't even touched the inside of the building. I mean, the carpets are, are still ripped out and that type of stuff, and we were kind of put on hold because it was a... No, you see you see how much I noticed when I was in there. You notice how yeah. much I noticed what's going on in that police yeah. department. He, I don't look around and see what's going, yeah. what, what has to be done or nothing, you know. Right. I just go in and do talk you, to you. And, do your business. And and that's right, you know. And uh, everybody says, you know, they'll say, oh, we got this and we got that. And I could go in my kid's house every day of the week and I they got something new I might not see it for two or three months down right. the line you know yeah. I don't go in places to look and see what's right. going on uh, now I know that now I know you people have got to make some changes in the police department if you're going to really stay there down the line and one of the things is you're going to have to uh, make something for the drain but they did fix the drain thing up on the well hill. what they did is uh, Norman uh, after the second flood and we had some people from town look it over and, and that type of stuff and one of the persons indicated that if we put like a berm on top of the hill to prevent water washing down from Western Avenue into that drain that it would probably alleviate most of our problem and and he had that put in shortly after the second flood and um, knock on wood we haven't had any problem I mean we had a lot of snow in December and then that rain afterwards and we didn't have any flooding problem, and as if you went up on the town yeah. um, office level and looked down, you could see the reduction of the amount of water that was flowing actually down into that drain. So it wasn't so, really a lot. So it, hopefully, it's going to alleviate that problem. Um, and we looked at moving the door around the corner and blocking it off, and and there is a couple cracks in the wall. On that back side where we wanted to put a door and we're now concerned with all the people that are looking at it are concerned with the uh, structural integrity of That's cutting right. that concrete wall i don't know how i can't remember how old that building is but i know it's my dad was alive when when it was built and he's been gone my daughter was 43 and she was five so you know it's been there for a yeah. long time and if you get cracks in the wall any kind of especially with that brick and stuff, you have to be very right, careful. Right, and, and, and that's what happens, is what they're concerned about is, if they cut the concrete under the brick, is it gonna do something to the brick and create further problems with the building? Yeah. So, um, we're kind of on hold, and um, powers to be higher than me are gonna make the ultimate decision on what we're eventually gonna do. Are we gonna refurbish what we have and, and hopefully go a 10 year period of time and not have a problem or go forever and not have a problem. That's right. I, I, I looking at it, to, I kind of think that that berm at the top of the hill is alleviated yeah. a lot and I think that may have solved our problem totally but I don't want to be the one that says it's going to and then have it flood out next week. No, no, you don't because you never know. We might have a, a, a flood that... That's right. I mean, rainstorm that could be so bad that you know, it could flood everywhere. That's right. And, and and that's what those two storms were. They were basically downpours. They only lasted 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and we got like two inches of rain in that short period of time. And it just overloaded the capacity of all the drains. I mean, Main Street flooded. Oh, and, yeah. And our drain from that front door basically runs to Main Street. So uh, when it floods on Main Street, we're flooded too. So. Yeah, uh, there's you know it's it, it's what you could call, always call the gully down through there, so it is kind of hard right. to really. I guess if you look at the old map, I guess actually there was a brook or something that ran yeah. down through that yeah. proximity somewhere. Yeah, right. So yeah, well if you go out way out on Ellis Flats, we're way out probably pretty near to twelve, pretty near to Clouds Corner, and come down through that. All there's a brook that runs right through, and you can right. call it swamp. And most people call it swamp. It comes right into town, and it comes down on Park Street and right down through, you know. Right. So so it was a brook at one years and years and years ago that right. went through it and people filled it up and which back then you could do you, that. Back then you didn't have to worry about D E P That's right. Now you have to worry about D E P and what and what you put in it too. Right. You know, and everything. And uh, so it's a, it's a hard situation and like you said, if you move into another building and you have to have so much wiring and you get all everything all set up there, you know, all your 
for 911 and all that stuff and you were sitting there you had to turn all around and you and you have we'll say this building wire for that for that part right and you'd have to go on the roof because this is the highest part of it and everything you're talking a lot of money right a lot a lot of money but maybe down the line there might be a grant or something that could and and maybe too it might come to a point that the police department might have to have a building all by itself right you know right and uh our, uh you know that's something down the line that nobody ever knows you know right uh because the little jail you can't put nobody in the little jail now because they yep. use it one madison avenue use it for storage right and uh I mean, it wasn't very big, but it was still yeah. the jail. <laughs> right. Uh, that was way back. <laughs> yes. Way back. I know they have passed a lot of different laws to do with the with the the IOUs and uh, the speeding tickets and uh, uh, different things like that. Can you kind of kind of bring us up to date? Well, the big thing is, um, and and I'm doing right now in the process of doing um, statistics for last year and um, from when I came in here in 2002 and, and stuff like that and looking at re reductions in or increases in certain things and, and uh, like for the fiscal year of 2003 um, the police department arrested 24 people in the town of Madison for operating under the influence well, is that a big, big figure? Well, um, yes and no. If you look at it, that's two per month, um, and and I'm not saying that that's all there were either. Um, I mean, my feeling is uh, there were as many that got away as we, as we actually caught. You know, one of the things that uh, uh, you mentioned it earlier, grants. Um, we've been actually pretty successful on getting some grants and. Uh, we had an OUI grant for like two thousand dollars to work OUI details um, specifically at high OUI times uh, within the town, and uh, we've done pretty well with those grants. Now, what you call high in the town is it more it's well, more summertime than it is? Well, some summertime and weekends, and you know, it's it, it depends what's going on in the community. Uh, for example, you know, it could be a high school graduation where there were, could be a lot of kids or, and we had a grant for underage drinking, for example, that uh, we had details on the nights of graduations. Uh, we worked uh, in, in conjunction with the sheriff's department and the local police departments. Um, for example, in North Anson, they had their uh, mud runs and that type of thing. and. And we worked with the sheriff's department uh, uh, in conjunction with underage drinking at those, and and uh, you know there were different times that uh, we need. I can remember graduation. A little extra money, exactly right. I can remember. All of us, all I of us remember, remember that. Can you remember your graduation, so. Richard? Oh yeah. <laughs> I just remember my sons took my car up over the bank, <laughs> but it's 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 like you said, you know that. that there is a people out there that might have a couple of drinks, right? But depends on what it is they're drinking too. That there's a big there is a big factor in determining one sobriety, um, and it, it, number one, it depends on what that person's done that day. You know, um, a person should not sit there and say, "I'm allowed to have two drinks or three drinks, and I'm all set to go," because you know if for example, they only got three and a half, four hours sleep that night, didn't have any lunch, or something along that line. Um, that could make an effect on what their BAC, what we call is uh, blood alcohol content, and it would make a difference. Uh, you know, and the, the best thing is that if people drink and um, have a designated driver, um, even one drink you know have somebody go with them it alleviates problems because oh, yeah. you know a, a lot of times for example uh, in some of the crashes that have been throughout the state of Maine is you know a pedestrian just walking down the road 
um, is, is hit or something along that line or another vehicle hits this person that uh, um, they didn't really do anything wrong and got hit by another vehicle and they're, uh, they're arrested or charged with OUI um, and you know they were hit by somebody else and hadn't done anything wrong. There are those incidents that uh, Now we'll place. say you can, now if somebody is walking we'll say on Main Street is there a law that says that the police, the policeman that's on duty, can arrest that person if they're drunk? No, there's no public intoxication law here in the state of Maine. If it was a juvenile type incident, or they were out after curfew, or something along that line, we can take enforcement action like that. But technically, um, being intoxicated, unless they were a hazard yeah, to yeah, like, themselves you know, those, or somebody yeah, else that or something along that line. But I mean, if they was just walking, you know. If they were just walking normal and, um, you know, there were no signs of um, public intoxication and they weren't walking out into the street or that type of thing, they were just walking on their way home, um, there's no violation. There. I just want to know in case I'm ever doing that. In case you want to walk yeah, home sometimes. In case I want to walk home sometimes, you know, what the loot, what laws are, you know. All right. We know there's a lot of teenage drinking, and 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 it's not always the parents that even know about it, you know. Right. And that's the sad part of it. You can teach your your boy, your son, or your daughter, or your grandchildren not to do it, not to drive, not to go out in public and everything, or not even to touch it. Right. But they're going to be. They're the ones that make the ultimate. That's right. Decision not the parents. On, that, not the parents. I mean, the parents basically uh, teach them the difference between right and wrong and it's a decision that they have to make and uh, they know or should know um, that they are the one that makes the ultimate decision they don't have anybody to blame but themselves if something happens they get picked up see here in the state of Maine we have a, basically a zero, zero tolerance for people under the age of 21 um, for operating a motor vehicle. We can't have any blood alcohol content in their system. Um, or they can administratively lose their driver's license. Now, another question I wanted to ask you is that uh, the seat belt, is that still being enforced like it always has? Right. In fact, um, I, I've got paperwork sitting on my desk right now that uh, the uh, Department of Highway Safety um, in Augusta is having a big campaign over the Memorial Day weekend for us to um, do seatbelt enforcement. And uh, we are going to put manpower out there. But they, are, they are going to, in fact, fund money for us to have people out there. So um, it's advantageous for us to get out there and do what uh, you have to do. What we have to do, and, and get that compliance down. And it's it's the big holiday weekend, and it's like four or five days prior and four or five days after the to have that big push on. And in fact, th th what they're doing is when we sign up for that particular, they may send somebody from say the Augusta area to come in and set in different locations in the state of Maine, I mean in the town of Madison, and maybe at a stop sign and, and monitor 50 cars through there and, and say, you know, 48 out of the 50 had the seat belt or 25 out of the 50, Madison's got a certain percentage of compliance. And then after that period of time where we do that enforcement, they're going to go back out and see if our enforcement has done anything and our compliance is up. Okay, make sure I put a big sign over my visor. Put your seat belt put on. Put your seat belt on. Uh, it is a habit that if you you keep doing it, it is. It, it is. I mean, uh, you know, I can, I can remember back where, you know, 90% of the people didn't wear the seat belts. And now we have generation after generation of kids that it was mandatory to wear them 
So it's an instinctive action for them to get behind the wheel of the car or in the seat of the car and automatically yeah. put that seatbelt on. Oh, yeah. My my, my so, daughter's like that. She gets in the car. I don't care whose car it is. And the first thing she does is put a seatbelt yeah, on. Yeah, my, my grandson will do that to me. Yeah. You know, he'll tell me, put your seatbelt on. Well, my, 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 my oldest grandson always says, Jeremy, you haven't got your seatbelt on. Right. I'll say, well, we're just going here just a little ways, but you're supposed to put your seatbelt on. Yeah. You know, so so if it, if you put it into the child's mind when they're younger, right. they're going to remember it, and, and they're not going to do it. Because when we was growing up, we didn't have such thing as That's a seatbelt, right. you know. Yeah. My, my grandson doesn't even let me have it get into the truck. I get into the, my truck and stick the key in the ignition, and he said, put your seatbelt on, and I haven't done any more than that, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's good to be reminded of right. that. It is my my granddaughter reminds me, and and uh, and I have to admit, I always don't think of it, you know, and uh, I, uh, I really should. I know Richard wears his all the time, automatically. The seatbelt goes on, so there it's a good habit. It, and, and a lot of the cars now, they have it when you get in, your seat belts automatically. That's right. They automatically go right over you. And everybody's and it's not. They're not that uncomfortable or anything. I can remember one of my girlfriends and I, we was going down to Massachusetts. Um, she was up visiting and I was taking her home and we saw this cop coming, state police coming on the other side of the turnpike. Well, you would never saw two old ladies putting their seatbelts on so fast, yep. you know, because we didn't know if they were going to turn around right. or not, you know. But it, it is a habit you have to get into and it's, it's something you should practice to do and all of right. and everything. It's, it's a good habit. It's not a bad you habit. You know, it's it's not so much, I, I say it's, you know, people say, oh, I'm a good driver and I'm not going to get in an accident. But never know. You, you never know. You don't know who's out there or who may run into you or something along that line. And, and it's certainly to be better safe than sorry. Not only that, you know, if you're on a medication, you should have your seatbelt belt on because there might be side effects from your, from your medication that might bother you at different times. That's a good, good thing for me, ain't it, Richard? Right there. <laughs> but uh, 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 you do see people not with their seatbelts, so, and a lot of them are older people. Right. They're not the younger people. And 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 they grew up in a generation where, uh, I, I can remember that. I mean, in 1966 is the first year that it was mandatory for seatbelts to be in cars. They were an option prior to that. Yeah. So um, there's generations that are still driving out in the motoring public that um, drove cars that never had seatbelts in them. Now, we'll say you stop somebody for not having a seatbelt. They are breaking the law. Right. One thing. Now, what would the fine be for that? I'd, I'd have to look it up in our, our, our book, but uh, they can be fined. It's a civil violation, and they can be fined and, and uh, that type of stuff. But I'd have to look it up in one of our books here to determine just exactly what the fine would be. We have a, a whole list of, um, because we have what we call misdemeanor and civil violations in the motor vehicle law here in the state, and when we issue a ticket on a civil violation, we have to index and code what the fine would be. Um, now that would be a civil? Civil violation, okay. right. Now what is, what was the other one? A criminal violation that's, or a misdemeanor, that's, yeah. right? What's a misdemeanor? That would be like operating under the influence, uh, operating after suspension, yep. um, a legal attachment of registration yeah, plates. Like that stuff, you know. um, the, the the higher, what I say, higher violations. Speeding is a civil violation. Uninspected motor vehicle is a civil violation. Uh, no insurance is a civil violation. Well, that's the big. I think everybody should have insurance. That's the, I've always been on that part there. Now, if somebody, how long after? We'll say your sticker, your 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 plate stickers run out. We'll say in the end of March. Right now, do they have what they call that? They have a for in motor vehicle inspection stickers and registration. The state has given everybody a what they call a thirty day grace period. Um, you're still technically in violation, but when the officer stops you, he is required to warn you and advise you that you have to get it done uh, within so many business days. And we have a lot of that. I say oh, I know. They, 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 they stopped me a couple of times. Oh. It might have been more than one month. So. I mean, you know, 
I mean, uh, there's something when Ralph Triton had his garage on the corner where Cumberland Farm is that uh, he did that to his customers. He knew when it was time to have right. the sticker fix or the plates and right. he would remind you that it was time right. to do it, you know. So when you have somebody to remind you and then nobody's there to remind yeah. you, then you kind of have to remember. It. You know, in, in those days, Joanne, are, uh, are similar that, I mean, look at the gas stations that we do now. They're all self-service yeah, now. Self -service, and, yeah. and you don't have the normal, you don't buy, go buy your gas at the same gas station and have somebody come out and pump it for you anymore. Yeah. And those are the people that usually told you about oh, yeah, it, you know, know, because they were looking over your car and, and that type of stuff. So. Well, and not only that, there was people you know, most of the time you had, there was, we had one, two, three, about four gas stations here in Madison, and, right. and you had certain ones you went to, you know, and everything. Right. So, and they knew you, they knew the mate of your car, they you knew if they little noise and everything in your car. Right. And then, now mufflers. How loud can a muffler be on a vehicle? Well, it's, it, the way the law is written, it is a not supposed to be any louder than original equipment, but there's a definition in the motor vehicle law of a muffler. And a muffler is a series of chambers and baffles that is adequate in reducing the noise of uh, the motor vehicle. What is happening is that some people are buying what we we in the law enforcement field uh, or in the mechanic business call aftermarket type stuff. Um, and you can get those at any of the what we call auto part jobbers. Um, that is not a series of chambers and baffles which would make the vehicle be louder than original equipment. And the, the violation of law is, did accelerate to cause a harsh and unreasonable noise. And that is left to the discretion of the law enforcement officer um, who makes that ultimate decision. I have to wonder, you know, because you, you find a lot of the young kids, they have the, the loud right. mufflers and everything. Right. And I was just wondering if there was a law on that right. and stuff, you know. Uh, uh, I'm not going back into my childhood about my, my car, you know. Okay. Uh, the speeding tickets, they have, they changed the laws on the speed and the price on the speed. They, they, yeah, they, what they have done is, uh, they have increased the fines, um, on speeding tickets. Um, and in fact, uh, we have here in the state of Maine, we have what they call an absolute speed limit in the state of Maine. In other words, if the speed limit is 25 miles an hour, technically you could be given a ticket for one mile an hour over because it's an absolute speed. Um, and the fine for one to nine miles an hour over the speed limit is like $109. That's the cheapest speeding ticket that you can get basically. And they go up from there. They go to, I believe, 142, I'll have to check. Um, for example, one to nine miles an hour over the speed limit is $109. 10 to 14 miles an hour over the speed limit is $126. 15 to 19 over is 172. 20 to 24 is 201. And 25 to 29 over is $247. And um, that, was that's high. quite a healthy fine. Actually. That is, just, but just your foot being too heavy on the gas. That's exactly right. And you got all that, didn't you, Richard? Okay, I have to keep reminding him to remember this stuff. Okay. Uh, uh, is there any other laws in the police department that has come out new that that uh, you could tell us about that would be a benefit to the public and make it easier for the well your department the, or any department? There's really no new laws that have come out. I mean, there's some changes in the fines or all that type of stuff and uh, but there's nothing new new um, that has really come out to, to change uh, if people uh, operate under the basic philosophy knowing right from wrong that they should be all said okay uh, yeah, you can tell me if you can answer this question or not uh, if there's Somebody get arrested, we'll say, for breaking in. 
Now, the judge is the one that makes that fine, or is that a then a fine, or does it make it a difference what it is? Well, that usually is what we call a misdemeanor, or depending on what was taken, it could be a, a what we call a felony, and that is all accessed by the judge. Um, that can be both that, jail and... That can be both jail or probation and fines, restitution, that type of stuff. Um, the judge has the ultimate say on what the person gets. You tell me at any time. You can't okay. answer the questions now because I know these are just questions that people have been talking about and they have asked me or I have been thinking about and I just, just I felt that it was good to get from the from the police department to talk about it and then it's not hearsay. Right. No, it's not hearsay. Our, uh, if somebody oh, somebody stole a car, that would be more than if somebody just broke into something and took a package of cigarettes well, or something. Well, you know, if, if, they, if they steal a car, it's a, it's a motor vehicle theft and it, you know, depend on how expensive the car is. If you steal a uh, one of these new Hummers out there that's a minimum of fifty thousand uh, dollars, you know, obviously it's. I'm sure the punish wouldn't be a lot greater for that than they, if they stole, um, you know, a thousand dollar car. Uh, you know, shoplifting, say a pack of cigarettes from a business, um, is a lesser fine than. But it it depends on the judge, just you know, and it, 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 it depends on the it depends on the person what their criminal history mm -hmm. and background is, you know. That's all something that's uh, been looked at by the district attorney's office and the, and the judge and stuff. It's you know it's it's a lot of this stuff is actually depend on what the judge decides to do. It's right. in the judge's hands. Right. And everything. For the misdemeanor and the yeah. felony type stuff, yes. All right. Now. We'll say that a police officer go out on a on a case, and I know there's a lot of background work they have to do. They have to go and, and they have to do all the checking at the place. The, the case will have to be done. Then they have to go and talk to different people. There's a lot of there's a lot of hours that's put the, into something like you know, that. You know, I I say that uh, uh, people see too many police shows on TV. Um, there's a lot of um, these um, police shows on TV now, and what's happening is is everybody sitting in front of the TV watching a, a, what I call a law enforcement type story, and they see these big criminal cases um, that may have 6,000 man hours of time in oh, yeah. solved in a, basically six, 60 minutes or 45 minutes yeah. with the advertisements cut out of it. You know that's a big thing for me. Is is I think people see that and and they expect every case to be solved in that period of time. You know the people, the thing for the people to remember on a criminal violation that it has to be proved beyond a reasonable doubt. Mm -hmm. I may sit here as a law enforcement officer and know that John Doe has committed a crime, but I cannot pull enough evidence together to prove that point beyond a reasonable doubt, and that's what we have to do. So actually it's up to the police department or the sheriff department or the state police department, whoever's covering this, this crime, they're the ones that actually have to go out and, and actually prove this person did that, it. That's exactly right. So there is a lot of what I call back, back room work has to be done. Th that's right. There's a lot of investigation that takes place. A lot and, of hours. And a lot of man hours and that type of stuff. And reports sometimes, you know. Um, I've, I've seen and done criminal investigations that, I mean, they they look like a, an encyclopedia type thing because they take so much, many man hours of time and investigation and you have to document everything. And what you have to do is when you do an investigation like that, you have to almost look like um, what is the defense going to be? You know, where are the avenues or where the defense would go to try to say this person didn't do that and cover all those bases? Um, you know, you just can't say, or if, if the person say, yes, I did this particular crime, you cannot just leave it at that. 
because if that person that. goes to court and says, no, I didn't do it, um, and you haven't done a proper investigation to prove that he did, uh, uh, I mean, you could lose your case. Now, in a town like, let's say Madison, because this is our town, this is really what, you know, something like that happened, and who pays for all this investigation? Does this come out of your budget, or do they have a fund at this, from the state no. to pay this? If, if the investigation is done by the Madison Police Department, for example, um, we would um, pay for that on man hours. In other words, um, and I, we don't have a detective here in town, and if I have an officer that's assigned a, a case today, if, um, say, a burglary came in this morning, the officer that's working the day shift today would be in charge of that investigation. You know, he would have to put on the back burner um, some of the stuff that he may have intentionally planned to investigate that day from a previous case on the back burner to start a new investigation. And an officer may have, at one time or another, he may have as many as 10 or 12 cases going on at the same time. You know, in, in cases of burglary, for example, that um, obviously it's not one person commits a burglary and then the next burglary is somebody else. It's usually the same person commits more than one. So when you solve one, you've solved more than just that one. You've solved numerous ones. So it so. takes, it really takes a long time for them to really get down to what I, we call the dirty digger and the, and the, the, yeah, exactly the facts right. that would yeah. really right. benefit everybody. You know, in, in, in some cases, um, and it's hard for us to do, uh, you know, without paying overtime money and that type of stuff, if the investigation takes us to Waterville or something. I mean, we've had cases that uh, actually go out of town. Uh, in, in like the Waterville and Skowhegan coming to our town and, and us working with other investigators and that type of stuff to uh, solve some of these crimes. Because the people, or some of the people that are doing the same crimes here in the town of Madison obviously have done them in other towns and that type of stuff. So we are on the phone sometime with other investigators or have contact. They come to this town, we may have to go to that town to investigate some stuff. In, in it's a long people. process. It's a long it? process. And, and maybe, is this one of the reasons why, you know, say something happened today and they might not go to court until September, is this one of the reasons why? Well, he, 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 to a certain extent, yes. If the thing is wrapped up, the, the district attorney's office likes to have um, the cases in advance to review the cases. So if we, solve a case today, we may present our paperwork, court summonses and stuff to the district attorney's office, and we may set them 30 days or even more ahead. Uh, so it gives us the opportunity to get the reports done, get them into the district attorney's office, let them review them, and uh, go forward with the charges, or maybe even change some of our charges. You know, they, they may say that I feel that uh, you haven't charged him with a serious enough crime. We want to charge him with something that's a little more serious, or, or vice versa. So, so it's it's a long process. It's 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 not done in the sixty minutes that everybody sees it done in on TV. No, you know, and we know some of this is oh no, it's 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 like all the TV station, all the shows you watch on TV. There's always it's not that quick or nothing, right. you know, and and. I think some stuff that's on TV shouldn't be on TV. That's why we're, I think we're having so many so many problems with the young boys and girls in our towns and our schools and and with some of the crimes that's going on around. They just see so much on TV that right. that they're going to try it, you know, and they're going to try it. And and it might not be a, a boy or a girl. It could be an older person. Yeah. You know, that's something exactly. you don't know. It could be an older person and right. everything. Uh, I'm going to ask you another question, and you can tell me if you can answer or not. Do you think the drug business has gone down any no. in the past years? Is it worse? No. My feeling is, well, my feeling is it certainly hasn't gone down in the time period that I've been here. Um, there's a lot more of that activity going on than people think for mm -hmm. in the town of Madison. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have. Um, 
what I feel one of our big problems is is prescription medication, theft of prescription medications. Um, that's a, a big problem here in town. But doesn't, don't these young boys and girls or the older people who's ever doing it realize that this medication, uh, most any medication you take, even an aspirin, uh, has a side effect to it. Right. And I mean, I know myself, my medication, some of the side effects on it would really scare you. Yes. You know, and you wonder when you put them off, they tell you to take them all at the same time. Right. All that side effects, you know, it's, it's, it's yeah, bad. It, it's, you know, it's, it's not good for it, their body. It's ev eventually going to catch up to them. And, and I happened to be, when I was out earlier this morning in my cruiser, I, I was listening to the Gardner radio station and, and uh, the two disc jockeys down there were talking about, um, people that they had known and gone to school with and, and that type of thing. And, and one of the things that uh, they said that, that there was this person that was the same age as them and when they were in high school had consumed alcohol, used drugs, and of course, um, as life went on and got into the um, later years and ran across that person and they said that the person looked 80 years old. Um, and you know, and and they talked about celebrities, for example, that are um, using drugs, and you know, they're supposed to be um, kind of leaders of examples of role model type things, and and some of these people are using drugs, and and you know, look at the the people that have passed away in the movie business oh, yeah. of, of drug overdoses and stuff. Yeah. And you know it can happen. It happened in Waterville recently, just within the last couple of days, yeah. um, that uh, people using drugs and they've overdosed because of the strength of the medication. And their body can't hold it. And they just see. That's one thing. And when you go to the doctor and they give you a prescription, as you know, sometimes they'll talk start with a low, low right. amount, and they and as you go, they build it up if, right. if your body can hold it. Right. And you take somebody that comes in and they take a, a fistful of the same kind of medication at one time, uh, and they don't know nothing about, actually no background about this medication, it, it's going to bother their, their heart, exactly right. their, 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 their whole body. Right. You know, and you can really numb your body right up so that you can't even move right. doing that. And we know there's probably in other places, not probably this close, but outside of the and the big cities and stuff, there's a, probably a lot of that's going on that you know that you don't even hear about, you right. know. But as a citizen, I think there's more of different things going on nowadays in our, our little town of Madison uh, than it was when I was growing up. And I wonder if it's that we don't ha we lack the things for the boys and girls to do, that this is the things they do in, for their time to entertain themselves. Right, and, 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 and we touched on it a little bit, just kids watching TV. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, if you sit down in front of a TV right now and watch TV, um, I mean, that's about all you see on TV now is advertisements. Sex, and, advertisements. And, 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 and drugs. And, and all and that medication. stuff. medication. Guns, right. you know, and, and all that stuff. And, and then you wonder, where did some of these children get these ideas, you know? You know they're not getting them from their parents and stuff. But I often wonder, because we used to have a movie theater in town. We had a bowling alley. We had a pool hall. Uh, we had a roller skating. We have any of those things for the boys and girls, you know? And for the parents to go and do anything like that with them without going out of town. And I often wonder if if we had something like that in town, would it bring back some of the old movies? You know, it, it depends on the individual. I mean, we have a rec department here that uh, I think that does a fine job with the kids. Uh, you know, we, and we've got ball fields oh, yeah. and, and beautiful ball fields and stuff like that the kids are using. Obviously, they're not using them this time of year. And then we, the Dillon family donated the basketball courts down and back in the skateboard park. And I mean, this time of year, winter or early spring, it's kind of hard, yeah. you know, for the kids to get out. You know, the schools now have after-school programs yes, for the which kids, makes it nice. which is is good for the students and and that type of stuff. So, I, it it depends on the individual too. I mean, uh, you know, you can't stand over them and say you've got to do this, you've got to do that. It's 
they're most of them are old enough to start making decisions for themselves. And the basketball court down there behind, you know, the Mr. Building, are, uh, I've gone by there, and there's older kids in there yeah. playing basketball too, you know, and and it's really odd to see these older kids in their thirties, twenties, thirties, and some even in the forties down there right. playing. You know? That's the same way with football. I can remember back, not too many years back, they had a, they on Sundays or Saturdays, a bunch of them would get together and have a football game, right. play each other and stuff like that. Um, so you can see some of that stuff coming back. Right. You can see it coming back. And maybe with this new rec field down here that we have, uh, it might bring back more of the things right. that uh, would people. You know, I can remember as a kid myself, I mean, I, I was I had to entertain myself. I mean, I played baseball, football, rode my bicycle, uh, you know, and uh, um, the bicycle was a big thing back that, then. That was a big thing back there. And uh, in fact, I had a conversation with one of the business people in town the other day. We were talking about old times and that and that type of stuff. And and one of the things we talked about is when we got our first bicycles and 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 that type of thing. And you know, those are things that um, I mean, young kids don't think of. Uh, too much of now, but as you get to be, uh, I say senior, uh, you start to remember some of those things that you did as a kid and the good times um, that you had as a kid. I had a horse um, before I had a bicycle. See, you, you could have all the horses in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had one. Well, my well, it was a family one, you know. Right. And uh, it was really comical. We had to take turns with it, and, and we'd go up. We lived way down Old Point here, and we'd come up through, and King Can Alley was over here these streets over here that right. they had a name for it. And of course we was the only ones that had a horse and we charged a nickel or a dime for the kids to have a ride on right. it. So we'd have to, when it was your turn, you had to make sure you hold on to that horse or some of your, one of your brothers would come yeah. and take it away. No, yeah. you didn't. You make sure you never left go of the range. Right. You never did. Never. But uh, I was brought up with things like that, ice skates. Right. And we had an ice skate rig down here when the fathers, um, Made a beautiful ice skate. It was he had it open to the right. kids in the neighborhood and everything. But you did a lot of your own, like you said, your own entertainment. You you with your neighbors and stuff right. like that. Because back then we played paper dolls and stuff like that. I don't even know if they make paper dolls now. I don't I don't know. I never played with them. <laughs> <laughs> no, and things like. And we used to go down to the camping grounds, open campgrounds, and have right. barbecues and cooks out and stuff. And it was a a big thing. Families in the neighborhood would go down on the weekend. On at the church or something, you know. So you did a lot of things as as a neighborhood. Right. As a neighborhood. And it could get back to that, that would be nice. You know, you do see a little bit of it different places, but not as much as it when, when we was growing up, especially when I was growing up. Right. I'm a few years older than you are. And so but uh, you 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 sit back and you often wonder what is gonna gonna become of your town. You really do. Now, how many police officers do we have now that, that's full-time? We have, including myself, we have uh, six right now. And with this person that we're going to hire um, under this grant we're going to have, we're going to have seven um, full-time officers. And I have a list of reserve officers that fill in for vacation and training of the officers and that type of stuff that fill in for and like we we'll say like we'll get like Memorial Day. They you have extra. Right, you know. You can call spe special, special events type call things. These. We can call these offices in, and they'll work and that type of stuff. And we actually need them because, um, you know, the state is mandating more and more and more training of its law enforcement offices all the time, and uh, you know some of these classes. Um, or a week long, for example, at the academy in in Vassalboro or something along that line, and if somebody's gone for that week period of time, we've got to fill the schedule with somebody, and and we use our reserve officers for that and stuff. Because we even like we I mean, we even with six officers on, and and sometimes you have to call out another officer, right. you know, right? Or uh, besides yourself, you have to call right. out another one. Uh, it's still quite busy. It, it, it's, and like I say, I was looking in and, and don't hold me to these numbers, but um, I think there was um, last year for the 2003 
everything that we did as an, a law enforcement agency, we handled over 5,600 um, incidents. I mean, that that, that, that includes, counts everything. That, 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 that includes everything, you know, and um, I mean, it could be the escort at the bank, it could be a burglary, it could be, um, you know, the recovery of a stolen bicycle, or it could be anything, you know, it could be as, something as um, like a vehicle stall. And, you know, um, that's all stuff that takes man hours to, to do. Um, because if we stop doing a certain portion of our job, um, I mean, my phone's going to be ringing off the hook saying, well, I'm not getting the police service that I want. Uh, so, but there's, there were over 5,600 total incidents. That's a lot in a small handled. town like us. Yeah. You know, but that, co that covers Lakewood and East, and East Madison. And, and East Madison, that's correct. That you have to make your New York. Right. Now, is there a special, do, do you have a special one that go, I mean, you know, when they're on duty, does you have two or one? Well, it depends when, um, and I don't want to go into a lot of detail no, no. On, on where our coverage is, the, uh, but I mean, it depends when there may be two offices working or three offices working. And I try to get out as often as I can. I, um, and number one, to be seen, but number two is um, I'm kind of a, an extra person, you know. Um, if my guys I know are busy doing reports, I've got several investigations on, I may say, you guys stay here at the office and I'm going to go out and, you know, I'll work a cruiser and, and stop cars and, you know, check premises and, and that type of stuff. I try to do all that type of thing too to assist the guys that uh, work for me and stuff. You know, you, you have to all work together. That's right. You have to work together. Now, the next question, is there any of the police officers that we have now are at, the, at the age where they can retire from the force? No. Not, not at the present time. You know what I mean? I don't mean 65, but right. or, or that, but I mean they've had... Right. They, depending on the, if they're in a retirement system and stuff like that, they have to... It's, it's depending on what program it's on. It's like 25 years at, at 55 years old or what have you, depending on what system they're in, if they're in a, the retirement system. Now, how old... Can a police officer stay on duty? Well, we don't have any stipulation uh, on age limit or anything along that line. Um, my concern would be the safety of that particular yeah. individual. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, are they going to be injured? And, you know, a big thing right now is, is I, I look at, me, for example, having a confrontation with a 20-some-odd or 18-year-old kid. Um, I mean, obviously, he's going to have a lot more wind than I do, but, um, you know, those are situations where an officer could get hurt in just a short period of time. Oh. You know, and in and, and those particular times, uh, you know, he may think he's stopping the, the next-door neighbor's son or daughter that, you know, been drinking or use some type of medication or, or drug or something along that line, and those are the incidents where officers are usually getting hurt. We've had uh, um, several cases in the 2003 where it, officers have attempted to arrest somebody for operating under the influence and the person wanted to fight or, or domestic type situations where, you know, the person in fact, I just had one uh, just a week or so ago. I stopped uh, early in the morning that was actually leaving the scene of a domestic situation, and I stopped him um, basically shortly after it happened. And uh, I had confrontation with him, and he tried to flee. Uh, I hop, tried to hop in his car, and, and he was kicking and swinging, and, and uh, we have a pepper spray, and I used a pepper spray on him, and, and that has a tendency to make people comply pretty quickly uh, and he jumped right out of the car and his whole attitude changed just like that you know he, he, he basically said I'm sorry I, you know but it's that point of you know it's yeah. only that short period of time that somebody can get seriously very, hurt very because very that person um, you know he what I say lost it or, or snapped or what have you and, and those are the times when an officer is going to get hurt 
uh, when the situation can, came back in control, I mean, the guy apologized to me 20 times. Um, but, you know, we still had that short period of time where um, he and I swapped hands for a short period of time and, and uh, you know, he was trying to get away and shortly after he decided to comply and 180 degree turn yeah. right back and it was fine. You know, I noticed most of our police officers, uh, some of them may look kind of tiny, but you know, you have to be careful with these tiny people. Exactly. Very careful with these tiny people. Exactly right. They, so they have more strength sometimes than you think they do. They yeah. might look like they, you can blow them over, but be very careful of them. You know, I, when I got into police work, um, you know, I there was a requirement that your weight and height had to be in proportion to your physical fitness and um, uh, and you know the bigger the better is basically what they because there was a time where uh, you could be well assured on a Friday or Saturday night in law enforcement that you were going to be involved in some type of fight situation you know everybody wanted to wrestle with a police officer and that type of stuff um, luckily it's not as bad now as it was years ago um, I mean, I can remember going home as a trooper and, and, and changing my uniform a couple times a night because it may have had blood on it, may have got torn or something along that line. And everybody wanted to fight. People. Oh, back then, now, you know, they want a drop was a, of a hat, they wanted to fight. A, they that, wanted to, they, that was a Friday and a Saturday night. That you know? was a Friday and a Saturday night. There that, wasn't one big fight. There wasn't. And, wasn't that's right. And, you know. and that's kind of gone away. And, and, um, the training of the police officers hasn't, uh, I mean, it's, it, it's changed, but it hasn't changed that much, the physical fitness portion of it. So that little guy um, that's out driving, he's, you know, you can say he's not a very big person, but he's met the same requirements yeah. that the big guy had to meet. Oh, yeah. And sometimes, like you say, the little guy does a lot better than the big guy. The big guy has the intimidation factor because of his size, but the little guy is as good a shape as the bigger person and they meet they have to meet that same standard so yeah uh, you know it is it and it's kind of funny sometimes when you you see when one of the short ones having a big guy up here and you wonder you know what's going to take place there but you know that and and lots of times after you if you talk to them right if you if you approach the people that you're going to you stopped or you have to arrest them. If you talk right. to them right, you don't have much trouble. Right. And, it, and that depends on uh, sometimes what the person is on. If that person is taking a medication, I mean, we might as well be talking to this wall here uh, sometimes. Uh, but if they're coherent and, and they understand that, that it, you know, it's all in the approach sometimes. Um, and, and a lot of times, because the person is smaller, they you know, it was a when the big officer went there. Everybody wanted to fight with him because they thought they were going to be tougher it, than yeah, he yeah. was, and they and they wanted to fight with him because he was big. Um, and that's kind of changed over the years. That not, they don't want to fight as much, and the officers have got smaller, and and uh, uh, our approach is somewhat different now, and, and that type of stuff. So um, it's it's a lot better now, a lot easier than it used to be. Yeah. Now, uh, the the police department, every every police officer, are they on duty twenty four hours a day like the fire department? No. No, I mean I mean they have to be, they don't have to be home sitting beside the phone no. waiting for anybody to no. come. But if you need them, we can we can get hold of them or call them and they can come in if we make contact with them and that type of stuff. You know, you have kind of an idea. Of, yeah, I mean, you know, we we right now are, are looking at. Uh, you know this big terrorism stuff that's going on in the country and and uh, you know we're looking at if there was a um, uh, some type of terrorist situation here in Somerset County you know what's the availability of law enforcement officers to respond to a situation in a particular location yeah. um, you know if it was something down on the railroad tracks here in Madison and um, you know something along that line, um, you know, I have basically six people uh, that I can get hold of. You know, you may need 26 people to do that job, 
where we would call in the sheriff's department and you know the state police and that type of stuff and you know obviously if it had something to do with the railroad the railroad uh, police would be there and that type of stuff you know there's all kinds of different situations and and if it took place that you need a large amount of manpower our uh, now you like if something happens do is there many times that you have citizens that step in and help you uh i haven't encountered any here in um Madison where anybody's stopped to assist uh, um, or anything like that. I mean, the, what I have had is in the course of in, in investigations and stuff, um, We, in fact, we had a, several incidents here in town where an incident had taken place and um, I saw a particular businessman from who lives here in town drive down the main street and I said, boy, that individual's gonna know who those people were that were. So I went back and saw him, and uh, you know, he gave me the information that I was looking for. He says, yeah, I know who those kids were. Um, and it actually helped solve a crime, you know. Um, but I can remember as a trooper or arresting a guy for drunken driving on a Saturday afternoon one time, and he and I were in, standing beside a four-lane highway wrestling back and forth, and. And uh, a motorist stopped and said, uh, Trooper, can I help you? You know, and uh, I said, yeah, do this for me. And he did it. And basically the guy, I, you know, he decided that he would go peacefully with me at that point in time. But we haven't had any incidents like that here in Madison. But the, the public is um, out there helping us if, if we know they're in the area or see it. And that, that's one of the big things is, you know, people um, sometimes something doesn't mean too much to them yeah. but that may be the one piece of evidence that uh, you know somebody called in and said uh, geez I saw John Smith walking down the street at two o'clock in the morning uh, that may be what we need you know we know what we suspect or have everything together but can't put him in the area because he's got an alibi that he was in Waterville uh, something along that line, and that little bit of information that you saw them at two o'clock in the morning in a particular location, um, may be just enough to solve the case for us. So if you know, don't think that that little bit tidbit of information. Ah, oh, the police don't need that. I mean, if you've got something that uh, you see or something along that line, don't hesitate to pick up the phone and call. I mean, it may be just what we're looking for. Um, I've done it a couple of times, yeah. you know, I saw something and I, I see, drove up and if they would sit there and I'd tell the police about it and they said, we'll go down and check it out, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and with the young kids nowadays, and the young ladies, the young ladies, I mean, they're only, some of them are only 15, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old and you see them that, with their shoes and their clothes and their makeup, they, I think they were 17 or 18, you know. Yeah. And our, uh, that's what I worry about. I worry about stuff like that, you know, with the kids, because with my granddaughter and stuff, right. I, I think about that stuff. And I have nieces and nephews, great right. nieces and nephews. And you wonder about that and everything. The curfew hour, have you seen if it is it working? It's, it has, because our, our criminal mischief complaints have dropped uh, quite a bit. What we're seeing now in um, the kids are, we're getting a lot more complaints from residents that I just had three or four kids run from my backyard type of thing. You know, I think our criminal mischief complaints are way down uh, and I, it, it's helped us out as far as that goes, but I think some parents are still allowing their kids to be out because uh, we're getting a lot more complaints of kids. Well, three kids just ran through my backyard, you know, and we go try to track them down. And, you know, we can almost tell where they're going by the reports that we're getting that, you know, you get three or four calls in the same night and you know where they're headed. So all we have to do at that point in time is just go wait. Yeah, eventually see, we're gonna see and years back too, and, and uh, there's a lot of places in town and that, that you was allowed to, if cut through, because now they, right. they don't, People don't like to have right. kids do that, but it was a habit. It was a 
you know, where I lived on, when I lived on Park Street, the kids used to cut too, because that right. was, their mother and father did it, you know, mm. and everything. So, so you just overlooked that. You just let them do it. But nowadays, people are fixing their back place up. They get swimming pools in it. They get right. this and that. But they don't want the children doing that nowadays. So that, that's... Well, and that and the liability, you oh, know, yeah. if, if you've got something in your backyard, like a swimming pool or something like that, and, and some kid falls into it or injures himself on it, there's a the liability oh, that, type thing that that's in, terrible in you know insurance companies are always uh, uh, concerned about that type of stuff and, and obviously the property owner is because he's paying the insurance bill well I never realized that the tremolese that right. uh, they they have to should have a, that guard around them you know right. that so uh, you know I never thought anything about yeah. that yeah in fact I I had um, did some insurance changes when I moved up here and and uh, you know one of the, the famous questions asked by the insurance company is do you have a trampoline or a dog and and what type of dog you have what does the dog have to do well with because it? what they're concerned about is the people with uh, Rottweilers and, oh, yeah. and those type of dogs and Dobermans and, and all these other type of dogs that are uh, bite people and that, that's what one of the things your premium is adjusted by what you have if you have a trampoline it goes up and if you have a dog it goes up and um, that type of stuff I can we had a chihuahua little tiny thing but boy it could bark yeah. and you swear that it was a big dog if you didn't know what it was right. you know and everything but uh, I didn't realize that your insurance run something yeah. like that yeah I I, I just Actually, I just dealt with it myself. So, and you have a dog? I don't have a dog, and I don't have a trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't have either one of them, huh? No, I don't have either one. <laughs> I'm going to ask you um, uh, a little bit away from the police department. Um, you haven't? There's a day nursery, daycare at your place? Right. My significant other runs a daycare. At, at my house, she's called it Madison's Little Footsteps. Well, I saw that. Yeah. And uh, she basically takes infants and um, kids up to school age. She doesn't take any after school or anything along that line. And uh, she had, number one, she had several daughters of her own and uh, uh, she's always been affiliated with uh, school and, and, and uh, swimming. She's a, a swim instructor and that type of stuff. So uh, she's always had dealings with kids and she gave her job up down in Raymond and, and basically moved up here and opened that business here um, taking care of kids. She just loves kids. Well I saw that and I thought it was just I thought it was just a sign you put out there you know to nope. kind of you know fool people you know. Nope. And nope. She's, uh, she's in the daycare business. That's good. Yep. That's nice especially when she takes little ones. Right. Now how do you feel about having these children around? Of course, I love kids too. I, I, I mean, uh, I look at it, and, and of course, I, being in my, my profession, I, you see a lot of bad um, That's right. from people and stuff like that. And, and uh, you know, I just, I, I see these kids, and, and, you know, I know how happy they are. And, and I go home, and they're there. They all come running to the door and, and holler my name and give me big hugs. and. And you know some of the little ones want to be picked up and held by me for the period of time that I'm there and and that type of stuff and and I just you know I just see how happy they are and, and in that environment and um, you know she does educational pre kindergarten yeah. stuff with them and and that type of stuff and how happy they are and and that type of stuff and and um, that's a lot of laws to go with that. That's too. right. And, you know it's she's. The daycare is all licensed through the state and that type of stuff. Yeah. So. I didn't realize because my sister-in-law so. has a daycare in Anson, and I didn't realize that there's so many laws. Right. And because my brother had his own insurance insurance business, and she couldn't get insurance. You have to get insurance. Right. If you if you're in the business, you have to get it from somebody else. Right. I didn't realize that there was so many. You know, I used to just I had kids. I I didn't never call it the daycare, but you know, like they just come and stayed and. 
parents right. come after them. And, right. But nowadays, you, if you have to have, oh, I think it's over two. Well, it depends what age uh, oh, the I children think. are. Um, if they're, you, you can have so many of them over a certain age, but if you have some that are under a certain age, you can have less than that. I think it's like five and eight or something like that. You'd have to check with her on that. She's right on top of that stuff. So but it makes it good, so. and, you know. And, and not only that, it's it. Uh, I think there's only two daycares in Madison now, isn't there? Um, I'm not sure. I know there's several around, but the I, I'm, I'm not sure on um, the age limit. The age limits and after school type things and stuff like that. So, um, and there's. I don't know. I guess there's probably, uh, if I can think of about three or four right off. There's one out on 148. Yeah, okay. One yeah. on Main Street. I, I almost think there's one down here, right? I don't know. I have to. Yeah, I think there is. I don't check know if she still list. has hers or not, but yeah. We'll get a list. Yeah, because you have to keep right. track of that, yeah, on your, in your police department and everything. So, right now, you think the police department's running pretty good? I, I think it's, things are going well. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get out and be seen and, and uh, you know, have as much contact with the public as I can. My guys are out doing a good job for me and uh, um, that type of stuff. You know, I, my, I still run the open door policy, you know. Um, if you've got a problem, come see me. Let's sit down and discuss it. You know, a lot of these times, um, for example, you know, people, if they get something to complain about it, they'll sit there and complain and complain and complain. To everybody else. To everybody else. But if you get a complaint, come see me. Um, you know, I'll, I'll give you, I'll certainly sit down with you and listen to your perspective. And uh, I may give you my perspective and, and that, then that's the end of it, you know, because um, people don't look at, sometimes don't look at it everything the same way that law enforcement look at it. We have to look at it from a safety type thing, um, you know, the safety of the people, the safety of the officers, um, that type of thing. We have to look at it a lot different than the motoring public here does or the regular resident does. Uh, so, you know, I'll give you our perspective and, and that may be the end of it. Or if there's a problem that needs to be um, Addressed, I can address it, but if I don't know about it, I can. So that's right. You can't solve a problem if nobody talks if, to you. If about I don't it. know about you it, know, that's right. Anything. And of course, you're going to have talk anyway. I don't care what it is. You know, you're going to have talk. Our, uh, cause I I see you a lot riding around and stopping people. And, right. And everything that I have. That's when I slow down. You know, and I see you. <laughs> you know, and and that is in itself is a deterrent. You know, that that being seen. Um, is a deterrent to... Well, not only that, that gives the, the taxpayers that's paying your salary, right. uh, you're doing your job. Right. You're not sitting in the office or you're not sitting here or there having coffee. Right. You're, you're doing out there doing your, right. your part, what you have to do. Right. Besides, I mean, being the chief, you have, you have a lot of little things that you have to do that people don't know about. Right. And there is an awful lot of office work but, um, that needs to be done and, and that type of stuff. And, you know, these grants that we get, there's a lot of paperwork that goes along with those. Um, and there's a lot of time that I spend in the office, but uh, I, I don't like being there. I'd rather be out being seen and, and, and um, Do you know, I have a saying about and, this paperwork, you know. So. You no, know, it get done someday. That's yeah, what my saying is. Yeah. yeah, just look at the top of my desk yeah. and you'll say. <laughs> well, mine, you should have saw mine last week. It was, uh, but I got it all taken care of now. But, uh, even here, we have a lot of paperwork right. we have to do. People don't think we do, but there's a lot of a lot of work here that that has to be done, and uh, takes a lot of time. And we're like everybody else; so only so much money, and we only we're right. only here so long, and everything. But I think we, you know, there's a lot of questions asked today that answered today that I wanted to answer, and a lot of other people that has, like you said, over the coffee pot. Uh, talked about and everything so I, I think that I've got a different position of everything and knowing a lot of answers that I can answer people ask me I can answer them right. without saying well I think so you know and everything. The only one more question then we're going to kind of close it up I know you get work to do uh, do you 
if you got something happened over across the bridge over Anson, and the state police couldn't get there fast enough, do you, as Madison, you have the right to go across that bridge? We we have basically a mutual agreement type thing with the sheriff's department and the state police. If if they call us and request assistance over there, we will go and stand by to assist them until one of their officers uh, can get there. Um, we, we, in the time period that I've been here, uh, we've only done that once, and that was with a stolen car, um, where a guy had stolen a car in a different jurisdiction and happened to get in an accident with it over an answer. It wasn't too long ago either. It wasn't that long ago, and, and uh, um, you know, the nearest uh, law enforcement officer from the Sheriff's Department and the State Police were quite a ways away. We basically went over there and stood by and made sure the guy didn't get in the car and drive off, um, because when the officer got there, he was attempting to do that. He was well, you no, know, it's always been the, the joke and, and with the, that bridge, and it was way back when they had the other bridge there, that the line was right down the middle of the bridge. Right. You know, and either the police officer didn't go over the bridge. Right. And it's, this is something that's always been right. a joke when I was growing up. I don't know if it still is or not, but, but the line is right there in the middle. Right. Well, to me, there's, to me there, there's no line anywhere. You know, we have to, I will say this much, we're not going to go over there for um, kids hot running around complaint type of situation like that, but if it's a serious crime or something along that line um, that we can resolve and prevent people from getting injured any further or, or anything along that line, or like in that particular case, the individual escaping, that we will assist them if they request us to assist them. You know, and obviously we have to look at our, you know, if we get somebody available yeah. to do that, um, you know, so, and in that particular case, it was in the early, early morning hours and, and the, the officer was just um, out doing his security checks and that type of thing was pretty close to where he needed to be and could respond within a couple minutes to a system. Now these, these, I know a lot of businesses have these security things in there. They have cameras now, which is good. I right. think that's very good. And they have an alarm system. Now, does that alarm system go to into the police department, or does that go into it? It into the rings system? rings into the comm center. Comm center. Right. And then they follow well, it. They will dispatch it to us. Right. Now, is that something you would advise the businesses that don't have it to have it put in? Well, you know, it depends, you know, uh, I would like to see everybody with a video camera. I mean, if uh, if all these businesses in town were equipped with video cameras, I mean, burglaries and Save thefts would be, would be a thing of the past uh, because obviously the person would be on video, um, you know, but it's it, it depends. I mean, um, I would like to be able to see them and have that, but, you know, it depends. You know, if the business owner looked into it, they may be able to save enough money on insurance, for example, uh, to um, make it worthwhile for them. You know, their insurance rate may drop enough to cover the cost of that. And that surveillance equipment now is, is when it first came out, was extremely expensive. And, and now it's the, the cost of it. And, you know, it's like... Um, TVs and VCRs, and when they first came out, they were extremely expensive, and now you can buy them 50 or $60. 50 or $60, and it's the same thing with this electronic surveillance equipment. Now the cost has come way down, and, uh, you know, if the business person looked to the insurance company and said, if I put surveillance equipment in, how much can I save? And they may be able to save in their insurance bill enough to cover the cost of uh, what it would cost them for that surveillance equipment. So, yes, no, give or take. You, right. have to, you have to make your own decisions on yeah, this exactly stuff and right. everything. Uh, well, I want to thank you very much, Chief, for coming down today You're very and welcome. out of your working day. And uh, I never know when, when I we set anything up if you're going to have to cancel or not the last minute, but that's your job. Right. And your job is, is comes first and everything. Uh, at this time, I 
would just like to give from the fire the fire person that that gave the the uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken supper for I just like to have she would like to have or he would like to have thank everybody for the support that they've given her and him. Uh, it was if you didn't go, it was a beautiful. Story. Yeah, I did. I uh, I go I, and I went er relatively early and and uh, was there and um, I, I guess it was a good turnout of three hundred yeah. and some odd people. Yeah, or something it was a big one. turnout. A lot big of people turnout, come in. Turnout. I mean, a lot of people come in and took it out. You know, right. took it home. And one person came in. They had ten. Ten of those dishes. And I said to myself, Well, Kentucky Fried Chicken. I could eat probably five. I love Kentucky Fried Chicken, yeah. and you know, and people don't understand. That's one of the worst things you can eat is yeah. the skin on Kentucky right. Fried Chicken. But but that's the best part. That's the best part, <laughs> right? And everything. We want to thank everybody, and hope you all have a good week and everything. And remember to keep your seatbelts on. They're going to be watching. Thank you very much. And uh, this is our community, and we'll see you again later.